It's Smart's lover of all things iconic. Welcome back to your weekly fashion news. We have quite a bit to go through today, so let's just get straight to it. Starting out with one of my fave designers of the moment, Glenn Martins. He has just announced that he's going to be doing a He's going to be doing a collab. Starting out with Glenn Martins, one of my favorite designers of the moment, he just announced that he is doing a collab with H&M in fall 2025. Hearing this news really, really, really excites me because he's one of my favorite designers and he can really like make magic with like just basics and H&M is like the land of basics. So I'm very interested to see exactly what he's going to do with H&M. Like H&M with a special Glenn Martin's touch is going to be very much iconic. If you're new here and you don't know who Glenn Martin's is, he used to be the creative director of Y Project. He brought Y Project to the forefront as you know it today and he's currently the creative director of diesel and i think that diesel just dropped a new um resort collection was it a resort collection or pre-collection some type of collection that just dropped it yesterday actually let's google it and look at it together girl that's not what i exactly that's not the fuck i asked for we're gonna go to google google Alicia. All right, so Glenn Martin's just dropped the Diesel Pre-Fall 2025 collection. So let's take a look at it. I'm on Hypebeast. So let's look and see what's going on in Hypebeast. Hmm. Let's see these pieces now. Okay, so it's heavy on the denim. It's Diesel. It's heavy on the denim. And it's giving us that stained denim that's like kind of dirty, worn, that type of feel. But okay. As I was talking to a friend about this and one point that he brought up is that he wonders what is Glenn like is this going to be like his personal take on fashion or is it going to be like Glenn Martin's under Diesel or is it going to be Glenn Martin's under Y Project like all of those are like different designers so I wonder what perspective Glenn Martin's is going to bring it will be very interesting to see um you know his take on outside of any of the fashion umbrellas like if Glenn Martin was to release a namesake line what would it look like and I think doing this collab with H&M is a perfect way to show that because it's starting at an accessible point and to get so many eyes at an accessible point with H&M Glenn Martin's I'm excited I will be in line actually invite me to the um y'all know when y'all do the pre-shop where I invite all the influencers and the fashion girlies like I need to be in a number because I don't want to be standing in the line for this collection. Like, I'm too, I'm over that moment. I'm over that period of my life where I'm standing in line. Invite me to the VIP, try on, and I'll cop a few pieces. Thanks, H&M. Not playing with you. Jack Moo is just the king, the queen, the emperor of marketing. Like the marketing is 10 out of 10 and it's never, ever, ever, ever going to stray away from being the forefront of what Jack Moo brings. But to me, the marketing does not match the product. Like I would like to feel just as excited about seeing the clothes as I do the marketing. And this week, Jack Moo released a, um, a new campaign with Alex Consani. And you know, Alex is just one of the it models of the moment. She's always gonna bring it. She's always gonna do her thing. And the campaign is gorgeous. They had um, Alex Consani laid down with like thinly sliced cucumbers all over her they had one where she had on the fair boots with the fan and it's like blowing her like a winter retreat but she's showing skin like it's really 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 a beautiful campaign but when i look at the clothes outside of the campaign in the world that jack moon is building i'm always lost like it, it doesn't give me the same feeling the same impact same with caperni like the girls give me all the theatrics and give me like blah on the runway i would like the theatrics to start with the clothes and then you can like build other theatrics around it but this campaign with alice consani this week i have no notes 10 out of 10 very well done now when i saw that mark jacobs was going to be the guest editor of vogue i was like one genius genius because anna has not incited a riot over having to buy a Vogue cover, even for me in a very long time. I think the last cover I bought of Vogue was, hmm, really? 
I think it was when Beyonce and um, Tyler did the cover when she um, hollered when she hired Tyler Mitchell to shoot her on the cover. I think that's the last time where I actually bought an issue of Vogue. Like I went out, was very intentional about getting it, and I just got the Marc Jacobs cover as well. Like so, her having Marc Jacobs as a guest editor, excellent. And I hope it continues. I really like give Solange. A cover like give Solange the guest editing because Solange is just a top tier curator. Like the way she would curate Vogue and have the girls and have it so black and just so luscious and ugh, give Solange a cover. But anyway, back to Mark Jacobs. So the way they announced it, they posted a picture of Mark Jacobs and Anna on tour with the Bobs, and that was all in itself iconic. Um, what I've seen of the magazine, because I'm still going through it. I just got it, what, uh, Thursday? Yeah, I got it Thursday. So I'm still, like, tearing through it and going through it. Um, the Alex Consani is also in this issue with um, Anokia. That spread is gorge. There's also a spread of Mark Jacobs in his house. And that is, like, it's very, like, it looks unreal how good the photo spray is so Mark Jacobs really brought back a lot of those old elements of Vogue that we love Vogue for but they're just not there all of a sudden I will notice that as I was turn I did notice that as I was turning through the magazine it was so many ads like can I get the articles can I get some journalism it's just like ad after ad after ad after ad like where is the journalism get the girls to write some stories like get the girls to give me something as opposed to just ads all the time like i know vogue needs the money but I, I feel there's a way to do it it's just too it's it, it, it gave me look at me stuttering it gave me the feeling of when you're scrolling tiktok and everybody's trying to tell you something like turning through a magazine the new vogue with mark jacobs felt the very same way but i'm ranting Back to the issue at hand, it was so well done. They also released a, like a 15 minute YouTube clip video where Mark Jacobs is just like describing each section of the magazine and he was saying how, I took some notes here, so let me see. Oh, so how this all started. So Mark and Anna had dinner at um, Balthazar and they had chicken and mashed potatoes and then Anna ends up giving him an envelope. And in the envelope is like mock spreads of like if Mark Jacobs was to be the guest editor of Vogue. And she asked him. And at first he was like, you know, this is not my run, this is not my lane. I can't do this. So he kind of talked himself down. When Anna approached me with the idea in mind that I would be the guest editor, my initial reaction to it was, I don't know how I could do this. I don't feel confident in my abilities. So I didn't really believe I was up to it, but Anna can be very persuasive. And he quickly realized that this is an opportunity that won't come by like often and like just do it, just try it. Like she wouldn't have asked Mark Jacobs if she didn't trust in his ability to bring the magazine together. So he went for it. And his first choice for the cover was Anna Wintour. And of course she declined to do it. So that's when he went to um, Kai Gerber. But my thing is, that's how iconic Mark's mind is, because to think to have Anna on the cover, that also would have been very, very, very iconic to see her on the cover of Vogue, like in that light, and like to let Mark style her and just like do all the creative direction. Like that would be really, really great to see Anna step outside of herself and like basically like put herself on the other side. Like I feel that that would really, really help her to like guide Vogue and like bring it back to the forefront because Vogue is just boring at this point like we don't it's still a respected piece of journalism but it's just it doesn't have the same wow the same genesis of quality like it used to um but she said no so he put kai gerber on the cover and um the cover was excellent there's two different covers there's one cover where she's wearing um mark jacobs 2024 i believe or 2025 one of the most recent mark jacob collabs not collabs one of the most recent mark jacob collections that i really like you're seeing it a lot now kiki palmer just wore it on her um press tour for her new book what is it called master of me or something like that um, you've seen it everywhere. So she's photographed in it on the cover. She looks stunning. And then there's another cover that I, the cover I got is painted. And it's by the artist. I can't think of her name. I can't think of her name. I'll, I'll put it in the video. But she's a painter and she painted this beautiful cover of Kai Gerber. And I just, I just love it. I just love it. So when it came down to it, Mark was like, he approached 
being the guest editor of Vogue as if he was creating a new collection. So when you create a fashion collection, you put together these ideas. This well, this is Mark's process. Mark puts together his ideas and then he like lets a world naturally build around those ideas and that's how he executes it. And that's the same exact thing that he did when curating um, the December Vogue issue. The themes that you will find in the issue is dance, fashion, beauty, youthful energy. So there's a rave in here. There's a voguing moment in here. Um, there's tango. There's ballet. Like he really wanted to focus on like movement and clothing and like community amongst um, different types of dance. And I just thought that that was I haven't seen that in a very long time. So he did that. He did very well. I think my only note there would have been um, for the Vogue piece of the um editorial you should have went and got the girls you should have went and got the girls the lay on me's the Giselle Royale Barbie like you should have went and got the girls styled them out and had them voguing down like that would have been much more impactful and much more vogue and glam like you should have went and got the femme queens the femme queens would have turned it out not to say that the vogue spread that you did didn't really turn it out but it didn't turn it out in the way that it could have been turned out because you you're in new york go get the girls the girls are here and they're working they're looking good and they're gonna turn us head like let's go and i really want anna to keep this guest editor thing rolling like do like John Pavassier. I don't know if you need to make December the one that is like a guest editor every year or do it every other month but I feel like your perspective now should go towards seeking out different creatives who can like bring an audience back to Vogue that's what you need to be focused on because your perspective alone in itself is making Vogue kind of flatline like you're iconic you've, you've done iconic things for Vogue we know this Anna we know this but your perspective is it's a bit dated like we need fresh we need new and if you have creatives that you respect Solange I hope being one of them let them get edit like let them do these issues um my friend Eddie was saying she should give Donatella an issue and I'm not mad at that I would love for her to give Donatella an issue and I would really really love if she does give Donatella an issue that Donatella and Guy gotta do some type of spray because they always play really well together in fashion but We'll see what Anna's cooking up. I I want to see what the sales of this cover is going to be. Because when I tell you, I rushed and got it the first day it came out. So I wonder what the sales are going to look like and if it's really going to elevate Vogue. And if that's the case, then Anna is going to have to keep this going. Peter Doe is leaving Helmet Lang. And he hasn't been there for like not even two years yet. And this is disappointing to hear because they did not even give... Peter though time to like grasp himself and like come into Hammond Lane you know with his fresh new perspective and I feel that especially that first collection like he just got hammered about it because I guess everybody was looking for like the traditional Hammond Lane and Peter Doe put his own spin on it and like it sold a lot which is kind of puzzling to me like why is he leaving like what's going on um like that bubble wrap button up i want that bubble wrap button up so so badly like he ate that according to vogue.com helmet lang has an audience who really wants that old helmet lang aesthetic back so they would much more love a re-release of like old helmet lang pieces as opposed to like bringing in new creative directors and like releasing new things best off of Helmet Lane's house codes. And that makes sense, but at the same time, like, no, because Peter Doe used the house codes really, really well. So I'm just very, I don't know, I'm very shocked by this because he didn't get time to really like flourish and spread his wings. Like I even didn't invest into a piece shit I was going to because I love Peter Doe and I love his work, but y'all didn't even give me a chance. Like he's out. Peter Doe did issue a statement thanking his team and he was saying I want to express my gratitude to my Helmet Lane team who have been an integral in supporting my vision. It's been an incredible journey to be tasked to carry on the legacy of Helmet Lane. Um, and that's that. I don't know. I feel like Peter Doe is a bit disappointed. I wonder was it Peter Doe's decision outright or was it Helmet Lane who's just kind of like oh this is not working. We kind of want to go on another we kind of want to go in another direction. What I do get from this is that I feel that Helmet Lang is looking for a quick coin. They need money, they need it now. They're looking for a quick coin, they're looking for a quick turnover. But I just feel like with a brand such as Helmet Lang that's very much iconic, that's very much like 
has the house clothes and all of that we're gonna need to give it a moment to like feed itself back into the fashion society because we the fashion girlies were excited we were excited about the Hannah Lane Peter Doe collab and I feel that if given more time um the sales would have been on the rise but y'all not giving the girls time no more so Peter Doe is out and Hannah Lane Speaking of out, Philip Limbs is also out his namesake brand. Um, after, after 20 years, Phillips and his founder partner Winzo are parting ways. They released a joint statement. It is with great respect and gratitude for each other and our long partnership that we have decided to part ways at 3.1. Philip Lim, the brand may be moving in a new direction, but they reiterated how proud they are of what they built and the community they surrounded themselves with. Our shared vision and hard work has allowed us to stay independent and achieve remarkable success in a constantly changing and challenging industry. So... Philip Lim as a brand, I guess, is here to stay, and they'll they'll find new creative directors to continue to like pump out the collections. But as far as the originators, Philip Lim and Winzo, they are out at Philip Lim, like they're parting ways, and I don't know. It, it's that's kind of odd to me too because they just started showing at New York Fashion Week again. Like I just started seeing them back on the calendar, so I don't know. I will keep my eyes peeled about what they're going to do and what direction they're going to go in because the girls like Philip Lim. Like, I like Philip Lim. I don't own any of it, but I do like it when I see it. So, I'll keep my eyes peeled, but I don't know. This is odd, to say the least. I think this is the biggest story of the week. 50 million people have stopped buying luxury. Yeah, 50 million people have stopped buying luxury. You should be scared. The brand should be scared. We all should be scared. So Fortune.com released an article. And in this article, they dropped a lot of knowledge about the luxury market and how like the current fashion girlies are just not buying it no more. Um, the luxury market is being predicted to slow down this year for the first time since the 2009 recession. Like the, the girlies have really stopped buying they've really stopped using their disposable income for fashion and like i know it's not been like i know it hasn't been like stated yet but we're currently in a recession right now too so it's it's all making sense the article also stated luxury consumers have either ditched buying luxury or have been priced out completely so it's like we're either buying it because we don't want it or we we have been priced out we can't even afford to buy it which is like how are you going to keep these brands alive if you're just like pricing out the customers that's insane the only two brands that are really like keeping it the only two brands that are really keeping their ship running and bringing in the sales and increasing their sales every year is Hermes and Moomoo. Like those two brands, as far as like the high sector luxury brands, those two brands are like, they're doing their thing. They're keeping their hands on the pulse. They're making the, the girls want to come in to their brand and invest. And especially Hermes, like I would never be one of the girls who want to buy up t-shirts and pants and flats and flip-flops to get a bag like the Birkin is ugly to me so I would never but the girls do it they do it and it's keeping the brand alive if I had to take a direct guess at what the problem is and why 50 million fashion girlies are not buying into luxury anymore I would say there's no more disposable income if we're getting disposable income it's going to groceries like groceries cost just as much as a new bag these days okay a week's worth of groceries is a new bag child at this point um secondhand luxury is the new ultimate luxury like we are shopping every day I'm on the secondhand luxury market I'm finding bags I'm finding clothes I'm finding things that are well made and it, it just doesn't compare to how things are currently made. Like, the quality is way better on the secondhand luxury market. Which brings me to my third reason, which is the quality, the quality and luxury has gone down significantly. Like, the hardware is just not the same. The tailoring is not the same. The stitch is not the same. It's just like those sweet details that you get from investing into luxury products. They're not there. Like, a lot of luxury brands are cutting corners because they need money. They need a quick pump out. But you're leaving the customer to not want to invest. Looking at you, Chanel. Like... The girls are not a lot. Some of the girls are buying the Chanel bags, but I don't know why. When you can get on the, the secondhand market and get one just as new that's made with better quality and real hardware, but y'all spend y'all money on what y'all want to spend y'all money on, cause I ain't got nothing to do with it. 
And my last final reasoning is that luxury fashion and fast fashion are starting to have the same quality. You can go to Zara and get certain pieces and it's going to have that luxury feel without the luxury price. And that should not be a thing. Like a t-shirt from Chanel should not feel like the same t-shirt from Zara. There should be a huge difference in quality there. But the way that fashion is going right now, they're kind of like neck and neck. That's your fashion news for this week. It's a lot going on. Not too much, but enough. So that's your fashion news for this week. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit that notification bell. I'm going to try to start releasing fashion news on Monday so that you can like see it throughout the week. Um, but let me work on that. Let me get my stuff together because there's a lot going on in my world. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you let me know in the comments what you think about Philip Lim leaving his brand. What you think about Peter Doe and Helmut Lang. Like, let's talk about it in the comments. And until next time, bye. Okay, I'm like hyping myself up. Okay. Are we recording? We are. Are we loaded? Are we loaded? Are we? Are we? It's Mars, lover of all things iconic, and it. It's Mars, lover of all things iconic, and.